I think the company started in 1953, 52, 53, in just a single little cubby hole. And uh, now we've moved up and uh, we have two buildings. A fleet of uh, service trucks, service personnel, Everybody in the company has been in, uh, I think, all but one new welder we just added has been in the scale business for at least five years. Some of us have been in as long as 43 years. I've been in 35 years. We probably have several hundred years of accumulated experience in the scale industry. I'm Gil Bond. I'm president of Pacific Scale Company. Pacific Scale has uh, an old line scale company in the United States. We were founded in uh, June of 1954, so this is our 40th anniversary this year. We're a small company. Uh, we manufacture industrial scales. We have uh, about 7,000 foot of uh, manufacturing space and uh, 1,500 foot of office space. Uh, 11 employees altogether. So we sat down and went through uh, a process of uh, designing a scale that was as lightweight as possible, one that was completely portable and as low to the ground as could be, and by portable, something that could be picked up with a forklift and moved, didn't have to be unfastened from anything. And in talking to larger companies, they said, hey, you can't do it. It won't work. You can't make them portable. All other scales of that type were fastened solid to the floor. Well, I guess we were just small enough and uh, maybe stubborn enough, and we just decided, well, heck, <laughs> there's a way of doing it, and we're going to find out how to do it. And we came up with it. We came up with a scale, like I said, that was about three and three quarters inches high with a steel deck framework underneath, load cell in each corner. The load cells were terminated with a junction box, and inside that junction box was a summing board. Now, the summing board is for no other purpose than to make sure that the same weight applied to each load cell in each corner reads exactly the same. If it doesn't, there's electronic adjustments in the summing box to adjust each corner to make them equal. Then, when you hook up your digital weight indicator to that and calibrate your digital weight indicator, then you aren't concerned about the corners anymore because they're even and you cal put the weights on the scale and calibrate your indicator to it. And then we decided, well, holy smoke, we'll get it, see if we can get them uh, sealed. And we got them passed as a legal weighing device. And we recently developed a all-aluminum floor scale and we just obtained the type approval from the National Bureau of Standards in Washington in April, making that a legal weighing device in all 50 states of the United States. These scales are ultralight, a four foot by four foot, which is the biggest that we're legally in, in, in manufactured, 5,000 pounds by one pound, weighs a little less than 170 pounds. Being aluminum makes it uh, it gives it a certain amount of corrosion protection that you don't get through the regular mild steel toughen low scales that we build. And the three foot by three foot weighs just a little over 100 pounds. In fact, uh, we had some pictures made of just two girls picking it up and loading it. It's that light. Makes it that easy to move. Makes a very good scale for uh, a saltwater environment. We can uh, anodize it which provides more corrosion protection. I probably already mentioned, but we are the only company building in all aluminum scale that is, up to now anyway, that is legal. So we started putting our heads together and came up with the idea of using a pressure transducer and a digital indicator that was designed specially for lift trucks. The pressure transducer is installed somewhere between the lift valve and the main lift cylinder, or cylinders if it has two. 
And what it reads is it reads the pressure in that cylinder when the lift valve is in a neutral position. With a load on the port, that puts increased pressure on that cylinder. That increased pressure is read with our pressure transducer. The pressure transducer sees the increase in pressure. There are strain gauges on the other side that reflect. It uh, changes the voltage. The voltage being changed goes to the indicator. The indicator sees that change and displays it in pounds. We make chlorine tank scales. The chlorine tanks are used for water sanitation uh, purposes. They are uh, basically used to determine when the tank is empty. It's not so much as a metering device as to know when the tank is empty so they can switch to another tank. At the cost of chlorine, this has become very important to them that they don't wind up shipping the tank back to the manufacturer with several hundred pounds of chlorine in there that they just lose money on. We worked for years trying to get the uh, state of Oregon into the highway department to uh, go to uh, electronic scales. And when they finally did, uh, they changed everything over. We worked very closely with the highway department in special designs. And we have built, as a result, quite a few of the scales in the state of Oregon with the highway department. And they've gone through and pulled out a lot of the old mechanical designs and put in a, a, a all electronic. And they're just about through. Practically every mechanical scale that the highway department of the state of Oregon has, just about all of them have been converted now to full electronic. Supplied enough lead cells for four robotic pieces of robotic equipment to handle uh, special uh, casting molds at the Precision Cast Parts in Portland, which is a large titanium casting facility. Builds a tremendous amount of castings for Boeing and other aircraft manufacturers out of titanium. And uh, these robotics are used for weighing the castings, making sure of what weight they are, and then it is downloaded to their computer system so they have a complete uh, record of each individual uh, mold or casting that is being used and that the robot, uh, robotic uh, device is handled. One of the custom scales that we built was a livestock scale, single animal. Uh, you're looking at the one with the wheels. That was uh, built for one, that particular one was built for a, partic for a particular purpose. It was built for the 4-H, for fair use. So we put some wheels on it so they could roll it, make it a little bit easier for them to move, and it's built to, to weigh a single animal. Uh, it weighs, uh, I don't remember the capacity of that one, but I believe it goes down to half a pound which makes it a legal device because it does read by such a small, small increment. We were requested by uh, a meat company to uh, put in an electronic scale in their overhead monorail system. And string gauge lead cells only deflect about three thousandths of an inch from zero to full capacity. So there's no great big drop from the uh, stationary rail to the weighing portion of the rail. And then the meat is then, of course, weighed, it's recorded, and then rolled on off. And they have an accurate weight without having to manhandle it and they lay it physically on a platform. Several years ago, a gentleman developed a, uh, invented a large gar garbage compactor. Uh, landfill being the problem that it is, they're filling up quite rapidly. Uh, it was getting expensive in hauling the uh, material to a landfill because garbage was loose. And he developed this tremendously large compactor, about 57 foot long, seven foot wide, seven foot high. The gentleman that developed this uh, contacted me and I went out to his facility in Tualatin and looked at what he had, uh, came up with a design to put the compactor on load cells and to provide him with a system that would weigh the front and the back and totalize so that they would know if they exceeded the weight 
that the trailer could legally haul, and yet that they could get, they had enough in there, or as much as they could get in there, uh, without uh, letting a trailer go way extra light also. We've uh, developed uh, special tank mount uh, type units to make most anything into a scale. By that I mean you can take a tank and put load cells underneath it. Uh, you can take a conveyor mounted on load cells and we supply the special assembly and the load cells and the indicator for, for that purpose. If uh, the installation is off a little bit, they're adjustable height-wise. If uh, they aren't perfectly on the same plane, they will take um, misalignment. Uh, they're self-aligning. The heavier capacities have, a, uh, have an up-pull stop so that they can't tip in uh, place in uh, case of an earthquake. They're uh, kept from tipping over. And all of that came from tougher mode. Pacific Scale is built on uh, the knowledge of the people that work for it. We're very picky, very choosy about any outside equipment that we purchase to go with our onto our equipment that we build. Uh, practically, uh, I think all of us, except the girls in the office, uh, have been in service at one time or other. So we know from the ground up what it takes to make a good scale what it takes to build something that is useful to a customer. And we've been on the other end, some of us also, where we have purchased equipment. And we know what it's like to be sold something that doesn't function. So we're very cautious uh, in talking to a customer, to, in, in asking him the right questions, so that we fully understand what he wants to do with this equipment, so that we sell him the right equipment.